Welcome to the Graybeard Chronicles podcast. Your hosts, Brian Halstead and Kevin Harkins, are two gray-bearded patriots who love God, their family and friends, and their country. The Graybeards are here to inspire, inform, and educate you on a myriad of topics they are passionate about. Brian and Kevin have a strong desire to share this with you to help you live your best life. Sit back and enjoy this amazing podcast as the Graybeards pass along the wisdom of the ages. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Graybeard Chronicles. I'm Brian Halstead. And I'm Kevin Harkins. And Kevin, we're here to pass along some wisdom of the ages. What the heck does that mean? We're not perfect, but we do have gray beards. And that means we've got some significant life experience, some life lessons, and some perspectives that are worthy of passing along. Well, I think that sums it up nicely. Let's get to it. Good evening, Kevin. Welcome to May. What is going on, man? Wow, it is May. And you have two days left in your journey, <laughs> your yeah. current journey that you're on. Yes, my mo- my brief insanity or something. I don't yeah. know what it is. Yeah, are, are you, should I have not brought that up? Oh, I don't care. You're good? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Yeah, boy, I tell you what. Nobody knows what you're uh, talking about there. Some um, folks don't know what you're talking about. So anyway. Bryant went on a 30-day? Yeah. Uh, a 30-day alcohol fast. Yeah. Uh, hold on just a second. Hmm. <laughs> wow, asshole. Man. That is friggin' good. This is a pineapple it, mango. It bothers song, me song. not. From uh, from Six Bears. And uh, it is quite delicious. I know it looks like orange juice. When I first poured it in the glass, I thought, they made a mistake. Yeah. And, and I looked at it and said, the, if your urine ever looks like that, you should see a doctor. You, you'd, you'd be in bad shape. <laughs> but it is quite delicious. Hold on a second. Let me have some more. Hmm. Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> I, I'm I'm well, thank you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's all right though. I I don't know what possessed me to do that. I just decided that um, you know I wanted to take a 30 day hiatus from drinking and and see. Actually, you know, I mean, I, I, it's not like I'm drinking a shit ton every day, anyways. But um, I did find out that uh, you know some people report that you know they stop drinking for 30 days and they you know lose 10 10 or 15 pounds. Um, Apparently, uh, alcohol wasn't doing anything for my weight. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I might have I might have dropped like five pounds, but you know who knows. That's pretty good. Yeah, it, it's not. I, that's pretty good. Five pounds, and all you did was, I mean, because you you don't drink that much. No. And so you cut it out on a regular you, basis. Right. Anyways, there are times where I drink. You do, you know, of course, stupid quantities, right. but that only happens once every like seven years or some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> you know, it, it does remind me. I have a friend that decided to give. Uh, I don't know if it's vegan or vegetarian, a shot, you know, plant-based diet. Did he wanted to do it, read some stuff about it. You don't have to shoot at those. You're right. You don't, uh, you just chop them down with the weed whacker. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That kind of stuff. So he decided he was going to try that out for a while. And he did for, I I don't, I don't know, like, I think he was two weeks into it. And I said, Hey, how you doing? His name is Wes. How you doing Wes? He goes, I'm doing great. How do you feel? I feel great. Is it working for you? I mean, you, you went into this expecting you were going to lose some weight and start feeling healthier instead of gain three pounds because all I'm doing is eating carbs of various kinds on this. Is that, I don't know, is that right? Plant-based or, or maybe it's maybe it's vegan. I don't know. I don't do that stuff, so I don't pay attention. Yeah, maybe I me, should. me neither. Okay, all right. I prefer the seafood diet. Do you grill a lot of food? See some food you like and you eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, you uh, you're a griller Nah, not, not so really much. and why is that i i just um i don't know never been a i mean i, I will occasionally uh grill but uh it's not i'm not obsessed with it like some folks are and, and i know people that really really enjoy it um i don't know just never never was bitten by that bug now i am uh i'm happy to eat whatever you cook on the grill all right. Uh, I just don't have any desire, to, especially in the summertime, to stand over that grill and sweat like hell while uh, while you're cooking. I understand. All good. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy it. I think it's a, it's a celebration. It's like smoking a pipe. It's 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 the celebration. You take your time, do it right. Yes. Like the coals. And this pipe is really good, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tasty. I, I'm I'm sure it is. It smells good. 
Yeah. So you had a a, a great experience this weekend testing out a a, a new uh, feature. We'll call it at your yes. uh, your abode. Yes. Outdoor fire. Do tell. Yeah. <clears throat> that was wonderful. Very very nice, and uh, we've used it twice so far, and many many hundreds or thousands of times will be forthcoming in the future. So yeah, I look forward to having you over and enjoying it. <laughs> May my son-in-law never visit your house in an official capacity. Oh, uh oh, uh oh! <laughs> the he been firefighter by, that he is. Has he been by there recently? No, 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 no. Because I know he's he has co- gone by from time to time. But he's only like what a block and a half away. Right, so right. good response time. Should he, you? Yeah, know. he knows. He knows more about what's going on in, in my backyard than sometimes I do. That's true. I, I figured that out last time I chatted with him when you guys visited. Mm-hmm. That was good. Anyway, what's going on? What are we talking about tonight? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? It's your your week to pick the subject, right? No, it's yours. What? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that was scary. Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, sometimes you got to change it up a little bit, right? I mean, it's important to, to change it up. And, I was I, I was and am ready to change it up if we need to. I'm ready. If you need if you need me to carry the load on this one, I'm good. Nah, we're good. I got you, it. You got it. I got okay. it. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Let's talk about let's talk about change. Okay. And uh, you know, I I think when I initially sent you the information, I talked about the the challenge of change. Yes. And uh, that's actually not the title I want to go with. Oh. You know, it's um it's. I'm going to adapt to that change. By the way, I'm ready. All right, good. Uh, you want to change your notes now no, or? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just gonna on the fly. I think uh, I think ch- the challenge of change, and will ultimately, it's not a good title because. I think when we're done talking about this, you'll realize that it's somewhat contradictory to the message that we intend to, to put out. Yeah. Um, so I think the, uh, the title of embracing change uh, is more appropriate. And okay. What do you so think? yeah, I'll, I'll pull that thread a little bit further. Why? Why, why are you changing the, the title? I think the, uh, well, first off, the reason I wanted to talk about change is because I believe that change is the one thing that is constant in our life. Mm-hmm. And uh, folks seem so resistant to it and complain about, you know, I hate change and, and this and that. And and like I said, it's it's one of the, the things that is most constant in your life. It, it's always occurring. And, you know, people, it's a mindset thing. And I think that uh, when, when you can shift your mindset to look at change from a different perspective, instead of seeing it as something to be afraid of, to, you know, shy away from, you know, to resist and so on, and, and instead see it as an opportunity for growth and new things and um, expansion of, of knowledge and experiences, I think you can, you know, totally open up your life to different possibilities. Okay. I can buy into that, <clears throat> and particularly the mindset piece of it, that it just, if you call it the challenge of change, then you go into it almost with a negative mentality, because, uh-oh, this is going to be a challenge. Yeah, and, and I've it, said, you know, many times <clears throat> that there's power in your words, and when you say, you know, those those statements of declaration like that, you know, you're creating that outcome, and so after I communicated that to you, I was thinking about it. And I was like, yeah, no, that's not the best title. I want to change that. I want to change that word. All right. But you, you don't mean to deny the fact that sometimes change is challenging. Um, I know. think it has the potential to be challenging. And it ultimately is going to depend on how you respond to that event that is occurring. Uh, and, and whether or not you see it as a challenge. Okay. You, you, you may em- embrace it as a welcome opportunity. And, uh, yeah, again, it's just a, it's a mindset thing. So here's a couple, couple examples of, of, I think, and I, I'm, not, I'm not discounting at all what you're saying. In fact, I completely buy into it, and I think that's the right way to, uh, to approach it in terms of your mindset. But <clears throat> there are some things that come up that end up being uh, a little more difficult to deal with, and that is you just got fired or I want a divorce or your mother or father or brother or child just was in an accident or passed away or, you know, something like that. The, the thing that does not pop to my mind is I'm going to embrace that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just, uh, but, 
but it's change, immediate change that's forced upon you. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying there. And I, I yeah, you're not going to, you know, embrace that and be, you know, joyful about, you know, having that experience and, and suffering that loss. Uh, and at the same time, I think it's important to uh, acknowledge it, right, and, and accept it. Um, and then from that point, decide how you're going to uh, continue to, to move forward. Um, and, uh, you know, you're not, especially when you're dealing with a loss and we've talked about grief and how, how to best handle that. And you're not, you're not moving on and, and you hear people sometimes use that term and that's, you know, that's the last thing in the world you want to say some, to someone that's, that's suffered a loss is, you know, you, you got to, you know, really just buck up here, man. It's time Cowboy to move up, on. Right. Yeah. Cowboy up. No, no, no. What you do is you continue to live, you move forward. And you don't move forward without the memory of that person and, and try to, you know, put that behind you. You, I think you leave that and, and, and hold it dear as a, as a part of who you are, because that's that along with all the other experiences that you've had in your life is, is who makes up the holistic person that you are today. It's all those experiences. And, you know, while some of them, uh, you absolutely would have been happy to do without, um, because of the, you know, the pain and, and the loss and so on that, that you've experienced as a result. Um, you know, many of them, you uh, wouldn't be who you are today without having had those experiences. So um, life is about, you know, mastering the, the experience and mastering your emotions and, you know, how I go back to uh, E plus R equals O. And I uh, have how, it. Did you see that? You looking at my notes again? Well, it turns out it's over on mine too. Okay. So we. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. I see it. Yeah, but I did see it on yours. Okay. I, you know how can you not? That right. is that is such right. a powerful formula. And when you take that and you truly embrace it and understand and master how things are going to occur that are beyond your control, it's how you respond to them that's going to determine the outcome. You know, my uh, my wife said something to, to me the other day. Uh, it was more of a question about, you know, um, it's a concern for a, a friend that we have in common. And it was, you know, so-and-so just seems angry. Um, why, why is that? And, you know, we had a conversation about that. And, and you know, if you're one of those people that, that just seems angry all the time, why is that? You know, what what situations are occurring that you could choose a different response to and have a whole different outcome. You know, things that are beyond your control, things that you just need to acknowledge and accept and then figure out how to go forward in a positive way from here. How, how, you know, what are, what are those situations? Yeah. I heard somebody else the other day say, you know, they were relating a situation where something happened and they, they got pissed off. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, I, I let them finish the, the, the rant about how they got pissed off and they said this and said that. And at, at the end, when they were done, I said, um, hey, just out of curiosity, uh, how, uh, how did being pissed off uh, help resolve that situation? Right. You know, and, and you could see, you could just see the air go out of the sail. It was like, yeah, well, it, it didn't at all. Right. It didn't. So why did you put yourself through that emotional roller coaster of dealing with that anger and the potential of the, you know, the negative physiological effects of that ang anger uh, over something you didn't have any control over? You know, control what you can, control how you respond. Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, it's, uh, that, that's all about uh, change. I mean, you can use that in so many different aspects of your life. And, and it's, you know, in, in that way, we're talking about, you know, changing you and changing your behavior so that you can enhance this experience called life that you are currently, um, you know, traversing the traversing. Is that the right word? Uh, that works. on this journey right. of, right? Right. Yeah. I, I thought of several examples, none of which I will state because I don't want to get into it right now of people who have done just that. And as you were talking, I went back to a concept that we've talked about many times, and that is when you do that, when you uh, make the decision to react in a way that is quite honestly harmful to you, harmful to you physically, harmful to you mentally, just think about the control that you're giving away. You said it. There are two, two things that you said. One is decide what you can control, and I forgot the, uh, the second thing that you, that you said. Um, oh yeah, it was how you choose to react to it. Uh, 
you have the option to choose any way you want. And that message cannot be said too often. And that is just, um, I was talking to Paula after our last podcast about E plus R equals O. And we talked about it. And, and again, it's a, not a concept that's new to anyone. Well, maybe it is. I, I think everybody under, intellect, intellectually, they understand what it means. But when you really take the time to stop and think about an event occurs, sometimes I had control of it. A lot of times I had no control over it. My response to that equals what the outcome is going to be. And she, she said, I love that. I love that so much that I think I might get a tattoo that says something like that. And uh, she wasn't kidding. That's very cool. Yeah. So, yeah. And there are periods in your life where you are going to, um, it's, it, a lot, for a lot of people, and I, I guess I'm thinking about myself, change comes in waves. You know, it's one and another one and another one. And another, a, lot, a lot of people say it, it always comes in threes. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's fives or whatever, but you know, the waves start to roll in and all of a sudden all of this stuff is coming at you. And another word that pops to mind and you can choose to do it when you're going through something like this is resiliency. Uh, That's another thing that we've talked about a a lot is knowing that accepting and, and expecting, accepting and expecting that there's going to be change and that you are going to be resilient throughout. Uh, predetermined thought predicts present action. So if you are going through the mental calculus of knowing that change is coming, uh, then then you can, uh, when it when it hits you, you can have a reaction to it that's much more positive and, and the outcome much more differently than, um, than if you just kind of get knocked off balance and blame the world and get pissed off and get angry and cuss and swear. And it always happens to me and all of those things that everyone knows is the case. Yeah. I, you know, you you said something in there that caused me to think of the, the victim mindset. You know, that's, that's another thing that folks just need to figure out how to change. And, uh, there's, there's nothing good that can come from that. So, um, change is, you know, being resistant to change is like living your life swimming upstream against the current. You know, it's, it's way easier and a lot more fun when you turn around and go with the flow, go, go in the direction of that change and understand that, you know, what, what's happening here is not something you can change, right? That flow is coming at you. Yeah. You're not going to be change, be changing the direction of the, the flow of that river of life. Uh, so how can you turn around and go with the flow and navigate from there and figure out how to go in the direction that you want to go to get the results that you want to get. Yeah. <clears throat> and stop, you know, just stop fighting it and, uh, and, and enjoy life for what it is and, and understand the fact that um, a lot of stuff's going to occur you have no control over and uh, doesn't do you any good to get pissed off about it. There's another um, uh, reaction that people have a lot of times to change that's coming their way, particularly change that that they don't like or they don't think they're going to like. And that is they try to escape it. You know, they go into this, I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to escape it. I'm going to bury it. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going to I'm going to go through actions and activities that is going to cause me to dull the pain, which is usually, right, some sort of addiction, drinking, drugs, some other sort of thing that's going to get your mind off of it to temporarily relieve the pain associated with that change. But, uh, and, and now we're going back to, uh, uh, George Bruno, it, it comes back. I mean, you can, you can choose to not deal with it right now, whatever that is, whatever that issue is, and you can bury it. You can escape for, for a moment, but the next day it's still there. You got to deal with it. So, yeah. It's not going to go away. You, uh, <laughs> you'll just be, you know, hung over and dealing with it uh, and <laughs> right th- that doesn't help the situation not at all you know because then you feel worse and uh, still have to deal with it yeah so uh you know figure out how you're going to change your mindset and uh embrace the fact that hey this stuff's going to happen how am i going to respond to it how what, what, what are the lessons in this how am i going to turn this negative situation or this negative experience into something positive because there's um there's, there's always something good that comes out of 
things that have occurred that are bad, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. And it might not happen right away. It may take a little while. And it goes back to that instant gratification thing that we've talked about. You know, it might take a year or more before you actually realize the benefit that you got out of suffering that loss or suffering through the whatever trials and tribulations there, there were during that particular time that you believe were so difficult. Yep. Well, what are some of the strategies then that you came up with to, to deal with change in a positive way? Have you, uh, did, did you, did you think about that or are you just, you're just saying we got to expect it and, uh, and have the proper reaction to it? So as far as strategies go, I think it's one of those things that you, uh, you get better with practice and, you know, you, um, <laughs> if, if, if you want to, uh, you know, I'll use this example, you want to, uh, you know, be an excellent uh, archer and shoot an apple off of somebody's head, you might not start with a live subject, you know. <laughs> you, you, you might start with a dummy that you're not going to kill uh, and, and get a little bit better at it. So, Have you, know, you done that? Have you, or were, you the, were you the dummy for that or were, were no. you the archer for that? No. Have you, have you well, done? funny story, right? No, I didn't have an apple on my head, but I did, I did have a guy shoot at me with a bow and arrow once upon a time walking through an apartment complex when we were responding to a domestic dispute. Oh, okay. Wow. wow. And the bad thing about it was nobody saw it coming. And the only reason I knew that, that um, he, he shot at me, fortunately he missed, but it hit the ground next to me and kind of went skidding across the, uh, the, the pavement. Yeah, that'll, uh, that'll wake you up. That's a deadly weapon. Yeah, that'll wake you up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but to back to your question, I, I think it's really – you know, it's a matter of practice and it's it's changing your mindset and catching yourself in the moment and it's a you know it can be a training wheels type thing you know you're not you're not going to just jump on and, and be an excellent rider at this thing you know you've got to uh to, to try it out on different things and catch yourself in the moment when you have that adverse reaction to uh something that that is is being presented to you that you you know see as change and and are uncomfortable with and you feel the emotions and so on catch yourself, you know, hit the pause button and, uh, and, and kind of reframe the way that you're thinking about what just came, you know, was presented to you and, uh, and, and figure out how to do it differently, you know, pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Uh, my brother has a good strategy as well. Um, kind of related where he, he would say, what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, it's actually a good way to frame a, a subject that, that comes up, a change has occurred or something's coming or you see it coming and you know you ask yourself the question what's the worst thing that can happen in this outcome and you kind of think through that what that forces you to do is begin to analyze what the change is that i think is a really useful strategy to begin to work through wow this change is coming what's the worst thing that can happen that leads to oh i'm gonna have to analyze it i'm gonna have to look at it from this angle and that angle and ultimately you're going to come to a conclusion and you're going to, in most cases, and I got to read this quote, uh, in most cases, it ends up being something that you know you can deal with. And you go, okay, well, that's, shoot, that's not so bad. I can deal with that. But um, I, when I was doing some reading about it, I was, I was reminded of the Mark Twain quote that we've used on here before, and I'll read it. I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. Right? Right? right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, are you are you a worrier? Right. You know, you're watching or listening to this. Are you a worrier? How much time are you spending having a negative experience because you're worrying about something and it's never going to actually become reality? Um, because yeah. the worst case doesn't happen very often. It does sometimes. And and if you have a mental state to say I can deal with that, whatever the worst case in it. I mean, I guess the worst case in you know, in anything is, oh, it kills me. Well, then you don't have to worry about it anyway because you're you're not here right um so that's uh, that's kind of a morbid uh I, di I didn't mean to really go there but a lot of times you look at a, ch a change and it, maybe it's a change at work change at home change in the politics of the nation who knows what it is and you just kind of figure out no worst can happen is this and yeah i can deal with that so it improves your attitude immediately understanding it analyzing it looking for the positives that, that can come out of it, finding the humor in it. Those are some other things that I thought of and, and read about as well. 
I like the the find the humor in it. Yeah, that's always, that's always a good one. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that is a good one. You know, any any time you can uh, inject humor into a situation is is, is going to you know take the the edge off of it. Right. Um, yeah, right. I, that's 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 definitely a good one. I I do I just I keep going back to this whole mindset thing. It's a uh, it's a decision to do it differently. Right. It's a decision that from this point forward, I'm going to think about change in a different way. I'm not going to be resistant to uh, to all change. Now there might be some changes out there that uh, you know you could be subjected to that might be things that are violations of your values and things that you do need to resist. Uh, and, and so, you know, don't get the wrong idea that you, you never want to resist change. Um, what what I think I'm saying and I think what Kevin's saying is that, you know, you don't want to have that to be your standard state of being so that you're never comfortable with change and it's causing you strife, uh, all, you know, in all aspects of your life. Um, there, there are legitimately, I think, certain you know, situations where it's a good idea to resist change. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I think in some cases... It's your civic duty to do so, depending on what the issue is, uh, yeah. in a in a legal, peaceful, you know, way. That uh, yeah, that to resist it uh, in the right ways is just fine. Yeah, and I'm also, I'm not sitting here in my glass house telling you that you should never you know get pissed off about um, change and and you know get all fired up about it. Uh, coming from a, a perspective of somebody that has never acted that way myself. Um, I absolutely have in, in, in times past, and uh, I, I believe I've I've learned from that and, and and realized that you know those those experiences were were unnecessary and self created in the way that I responded to them, and that I have the opportunity to do that differently. And trust me, it makes your experience, at least it's made my experience uh, on a day to day basis, way better. Yeah, I love that. I, I love that that you are choosing to look back, learn from those lessons and apply them as you go forward. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna change the subject a little bit, but I was actually, this, this thought occurred to me when I was uh, thinking through this, this subject matter this week. You know, we live in a world that the, the rate of change, it seems like it's speeding up and, and the, the massive swings in especially uh, in the in the political realm, in the um, moral value realm, and all of these things, and I'm not going to get into all of the detail, other than to talk about how much change there's been. So I was thinking when in the in the 70s, and and ultimately I think 1980, when Ronald Reagan was elected as our president. To my knowledge, that was the first time that somebody who was kind of a celebrity in another realm. Uh, that wasn't a soldier ended up becoming president, and in this in his case, he was a movie star. And everybody's like, "Remember the scene in uh, Back to the Future where um, Michael J. Fox goes back in whatever his character's name is, and and he says, well, Ronald Reagan is president,' and and uh, Marty, Marty, thank you, yeah. Marty says Ronald Reagan's president, and the the old professor is like, what? He's he's a movie star? No way! Just didn't buy it. You know, it was, it was a big change. And then just this week, so so take that. We we were kind of hit by Ronald Reagan becoming president. Uh, just this week, Caitlyn Jenner is, has announced that, that she is running for governor of California. And so here's yeah, a- I heard that today. Caitlyn Jenner, uh, when Kay, before Caitlyn Jenner became transgendered and identified as a woman, was the Olympic gold medalist, decathlete, greatest athlete in the world. Uh, later, um, went through a sex change, I think, and uh, became transgendered and now identifies as a woman. But so Caitlin is running, that, not that that's all that crazy, uh, you know, in today's day and age, but the thing that's really surprising and made me chuckle is um, she said that um, th that transgenders may not, in other words, people who were born as males should not compete against females in athletic endeavors. And who would have saw that coming? You know, it's just truth is stranger than fiction. And this is one of those things that has turned out. You could have never in a million years predicted. First of all, go back to when Bruce Jenner won the gold medal. This guy was like on top of the world, the greatest athlete in the world and so on. And however many years later, that was in, I don't remember when he won it, but 
it might have been the 70s it must have been the 70s right uh and and here we are what 40 50 years later and uh he's a she and she is uh, running for governor of california and uh not supporting transgender rights that many of the transgender community wants right her to support you know well, it's just that speaks volumes though it really does and and i i hope that uh you know people the powers that be that are, are making those decisions about you know whether or not uh transgender males that are that are now operating as females uh should be allowed to compete in women's sports are, are uh tuned into that because you know that's somebody that's been there done that and understands that you know in addition to the obvious differences in the anatomy of a man and a woman created by you know your creator whatever you believe um, there are other differences when it comes to you know not just the the sex of the person but their their physical stature their their uh, the the muscular uh, nature of of their build and you know etc there there are differences that are you just can't argue and uh, it it's not a fair uh, situation to allow you know people that were you know biological males that decided to you know have a sex change or whatever and identify as females to compete against women that's that's just wrong right you know yeah. get get up, stay yeah. <laughs> I should probably stop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, the the point of me telling the story is just to um, is just to show and make the point how quickly things are changing in our world. And boy, you can really and a lot of people are getting very, very down and depressed about it. And look, uh, you know, you and I have talked about it. You be you. You live your life. You live your values. You be respectful and treat everyone with dignity, no matter who they are, where they are. Back to Viktor Frankl. There's really only two races of people in this world. There are decent people and there are indecent people. Right. Choose to be a decent person, live your life, live your values, and decide that all the change that's coming at you, you're gonna continue to, to be you and live your life and to the degree that you want to be an example and have an influence on and within your sphere of influence the people who are around you and that's pretty much what you can do and that's all you can do and i'm not saying don't be an activist i'm not saying don't protest i'm saying uh that's part of being and that's another strategy be proactive when change is coming at you or when you anticipate that it's coming at you you can choose to be proactive about it analyze it understand it accept it expect it and you know take it all in from there and then become proactive proactive about what am i going to do about it instead of just letting it roll you over bowl you over be proactive and deal with it yeah you ha you have i think you said something about choice earlier you know and that's one of the most powerful things that we have as humans um, and as americans is that power of choice the ability to choose how we do things what we engage in uh, and so on and and you absolutely have the ability to choose how you're going to spend your life who you're going to spend it with what you're going to spend it doing and how you're going to react to things that occur around you and you know life um i think is 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 meant to be lived like you're riding a motorcycle there's one set of controls on that bike and you need to be the one that's in charge of those controls and don't let somebody else jump in there and try to control them for you you get to control where you go, when you go, how fast you go, when you need to slow down. Those are all things that are, are within your purview because you're the operator of that motorcycle called life. Yep. Absolutely. I wrote down some real world examples of, that people might be going through or, or have gone through uh, just to sort of stimulate some, some thoughts and memories and that maybe folks will, will hear them and go, huh. This might be coming or has come and I, I can learn from it and go forward and better. But, you know, there's a job change. You get fired or, or maybe you get promoted and, and that's change as well. You got promoted. Now I have more authority and more responsibility. How am I going to handle that change? Am I up for it? Am I up to it? Can I handle it? Uh, and so on. Yeah, I want to comment on the, the job loss, right? So yeah. um, I think in, in many cases that's a, um, 
you know, a moment of panic for some folks and, you know, oh my goodness, what do I do now? I've lost that, you know, secure, stable monthly income. Um, you know, it, again, I'm going back to the mindset, you know, take this as an opportunity to flip it and flip that from, from a negative to a positive. You know, what, what are you not doing in your career? What experiences do you want to have that you're not having? And how do you take this opportunity to better align what you're going to spend your time doing as far as an income goes in a, in a profession that is maybe better aligned with your values and more fulfilling when it comes to your dreams and goals? Yep. Yeah. That's, that's good advice and good questions to ask yourself. Part of the analysis. Uh, getting married and getting divorced. That's a big change. A lot of people think that uh, that they know somebody well before they get married to them. Now, I, I know this person. We're going to work. We got good chemistry. We, we are, um, you know, we have the same worldview and so on. And many times they're right. right. Sometimes you're not. But for those of you who have not been married uh, or are thinking about getting married again, Remember this lesson, you really don't know the person that you're marrying until you marry them and spend some time with them. And uh, I'm not saying that in a negative way, I'm just saying there is going to be change. Your life is going to change and you are going to have incoming at you that you didn't know, that you didn't expect. Uh, well, you, you could expect it, you could just say, you know, this is gonna happen. and. And on the other hand, and, and much more um, uh, sort of difficult to deal with at times is, is going through a divorce. That's another one where, wow, that's a big change. That's one where people tend to want to escape and not deal with it. Uh, and maybe I say a lot of people, I'm you know, probably thinking about my, myself on that one more than anything. Uh, but that's a, you know, that's a real world event that occurs you know, to half the people, right? 50% uh, divorce rate. We live in the DC metro area, kind of, sort of. Yeah. And uh, one more is uh, a lot of times companies get bought out, companies merge, companies get acquired. And so that's a big change because all of a sudden you're working for, and maybe you've gone through this personally or something similar. You're in your job, all is well, you're doing well, and then bam, your company gets bought out by somebody else. It's a big deal. How are you going to deal with it? How's your company going to deal with it? What impact is it going to have on you? And so on and so on. Yeah. Yeah, those are definitely big ones. And, uh, you know, how you navigate that is uh, is going to determine uh, the outcome. And, you know, that, that it can be a great opportunity or it can be, you know, an opportunity for you to figure out this isn't a fit for me anymore. And uh, all the while, I, I think it's important to remain, you know, flexible and, uh, and optimistic about, the whole situation and, and, and have the, have the courage necessary to, you know, make whatever changes you, you need to make to continue to move forward in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah. Another big one that affects everybody is the death in, in the family or a close friend. That, that's a, that's a big one. And, uh, everybody handles it differently. Everyone grieves in their own way, but guess what folks, people that are in your life are going to, from time to time, <laughs> ultimately, well, not from time to time, ultimately everyone's passing away. But sometimes it happens when you least yeah. expect it. That's say a no, change. Nobody's getting out of this life alive. None of us are getting out of here alive. That's right. Um, not I, in the physical sense anyways. Right. You know, one, another one that I personally went through uh, was the marriage of my daughter. You know, as a parent, you're always interested and, and to some degree concerned and hopeful and prayerful that the person that your child is going to marry is going to be good for them should they choose to go down that path and you want to make sure that it's it's right and that's that's changed because you know she went from being my little girl yeah to uh the reality of that could cause someone to drink excessively <laughs> <laughs> that's not theory Tell that's us. actually happened we have photo evidence not here is yeah it? we're, we're not going to show that photo all right <laughs> we might right. at some point at some point yeah. right yeah so um, but all of these things are just a normal part of life and none of the things that i just mentioned uh are probably nearly as much as again just the the, 
the cultural and political change that is just overwhelming us right now. Goodness gracious. It's coming at such a pace, and, and I know people who are really, really down in the mouth, really upset about it. And again, that's a choice. Well, think about all the change that's been forced on us in the last 18 months, right? Okay. With, uh, with this pandemic and uh and everything associated with it and, wow you know, yeah not not being able to you know gather in large groups couldn't uh couldn't sit at a bar in, in most establishments and now that's that's starting to come back and right you know you don't you you don't realize just how much you value things until they're not there anymore right and uh yeah i mean there's that's been a wake-up call for all of us and uh it's a um some of it was uh, was forced upon us, and you know, some people took it upon themselves to, you know, be more extreme about their precautionary measures and so on. Um, but yeah, it's 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 certainly an experience unlike anything most of us alive today have ever ever yeah, had to go absolutely. through. Absolutely, so different than anything we've been through, and and the the whole mask thing associated with it. When 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 all of this stuff hit, and you know they started saying you got to wear your mask i mean i was it was just irritating as hell to me i could i still don't like it i oh, do it's still it. irritating man it, oh. it dicks my beard up some right. kind of crazy <laughs> you know mask beard is fugly just straight up fugly it gets i don't know you know it's horrible yeah. man makes your you it turns your mustache into a which way mustache goes every fucking which way <laughs> um, yeah just no fun whatsoever yeah and and the thing is you know, you just now I'm starting to wonder, is it ever going to change? And I, I believe it will. People are getting sick of it. They are. What's the point of getting a vaccine? Oh, well, you, know, you still might pass it on. Still could still could carry it and give it on to somebody else. And, you know, even though you don't get it, if I, if, you know, I still could walk outside and get hit by a car, too. Do I need to walk around with a metal cage around my body to protect me all the time? No, but, you know, avoid walking in the street as much as you can. <laughs> So, two more strategies for managing, for, for dealing with change. All right. Talk it out with people that you know and love. What is the change? Talk it out. That helps reduce the stress. And then, of course, take care of yourself throughout it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that should be an, an overarching plan for everything, you know, taking care of yourself, your mental and, and physical well-being. Yeah. Um, I do want to say this. You just sparked a thought there when it comes to talking it out and communication. Now, we didn't really and it was intentionally on my part and and you obviously mirrored this based on the discussion we didn't take this down a um a change management path as far as talking about business and right uh you know corporate change management things of that nature because i think there's some different dynamics that occur there um the one thing that uh, that is really really important though is communication yeah and so when you said that i, I uh, was you know prompted to to call that out um, you gotta you gotta clue people in to, to what's going on. People will be more uh, able and willing to embrace change when they have a thorough understanding of the the whys and what fors associated with it and how it's going to impact them. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and so often, each one of us in our own minds want to go to fear immediately. There's change coming. It's big change. I don't like it. I don't want it. And now I'm fearful of the change. And talking it out with people, yeah. people can sort of get a hold of you and say, hey, you know, it's not going to be that bad. Right. And don't deny the fear. Right. You know, don't, absolutely don't deny it. Acknowledge it, um, feel it, and move forward through it. Expect it, accept it, deal with it. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Find the humor in it. Uh, know that it's not going to be necessarily easy. There's another strategy I wrote down. Practice gratitude throughout. No matter what it is. You know, that whole concept of, that. yeah, when you're, when you're in the right state of mind, a, a grateful state of mind, all of the barriers that are, that are there in a fearful environment f drop down and your mind can work more freely. You can be more creative. And, and even in the, in the worst part of the storm of change, taking the time to be grateful causes you to think differently, make different decisions, and I would say pretty much 100% of the time, make better decisions. Yeah. 
Sorry about the smoke. I feel yeah, like I'm, I'm no. turning this into an old Cheech and Chong set or something. <laughs> hey, <laughs> me. Yeah, which one are I you? I got the stuff. <laughs> that was a little before your time, I think. Yeah, maybe. Before mine, too. So, But I you know, heard it on a you know eight track or something. Yeah. <laughs> an eight track. <laughs> yeah. You might have to describe that to somebody. They might not know what you're talking about, but we'll, we'll L- save that for later. Look it up. Look yeah. it up. What is an eight track tape? Yeah. Right. Really? There are, there are I don't know. Well. You know, we don't know everybody that listens and watches this, and I would I would venture to say there might be some folks out there that have no idea what an eight track is and certainly have never physically seen one. Probably the same people that don't know what a rotary phone is, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, here's here's the deal with change. The one thing that you need to take away if you don't take away anything else from this discussion tonight uh, is the fact that change is going to occur and there's not a damn thing you can do to stop it. Right. It's the one constant that you're going to have in your life. The one thing that you can do is decide how you're going to respond to it. Yep. And then that's going to determine the outcome. E plus R equals O. E plus R equals O. Remember that. Master it. It will change your life. Well said. Yeah. Thank you. That was a nice little... uh cherry on top of the conversation yeah and lastly don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there yes. and the little bell icon so you can be notified when we post new videos which at the present time is is on a weekly basis the frequency thereof could potentially increase in the future hmm. but we'll see all right all right uh, yeah but until that happens or until the next podcast No matter who you are, where you are, you were wondering where I was going with this, right? Make sure that you take time to enjoy the ride. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Great Bear Chronicles. I was going to say we started too early. You will receive notification when new episodes are available. To learn more about the Great Bears, visit their website, graybearchronicles.com.